Hey guys, Tierra here with Dot Girl Fitness, and today's video is all about what's in my backpack. So if you're new to my channel, thanks for stopping by. I'm Dr. Tierra Range, a resident physician in pediatrics, and I make videos on medicine, lifestyle, and fitness. So if that sounds like something you like, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you never miss another video. If you aren't new to this channel, welcome back. If you're wondering why this is not another part of the residency application series, don't worry, I'm not done with my residency application series. There are more videos to come. But the videos that I've made so far encompass everything that you really need to know right now for application season and closer to October 21st, I'll make a couple of other videos that you can use that will help throughout the rest of application season. In the meantime, I thought today would be a great day to show you all what I carry in my backpack as an intern resident physician whenever I'm working a late shift. Now, usually when I'm working a short shift, I don't really bring a large backpack. I'll just bring an oversized purse and I'll carry all of my major essentials in it. But if I'm working long hours like I will be tonight, since tonight is the first of the next six nights of night shifts in the NICU, then I would like to have a backpack with me that carries everything that I would need for the next 13 or so hours. So first things first, here is my backpack. As you can see, this is an Under Armour backpack, multicolored, very bright, but still dark enough to not make too much of a statement. I got this backpack when I was in college, so it's lasted me a really long time. And the original goal for getting this backpack was so I would not have to worry about getting it confused with other people's backpacks when I was in airports or traveling because when I was in college, I traveled a lot. Now, this is a great backpack because it has many different compartments and it allows me to keep everything organized. And it's been useful not just in college, but also all throughout medical school. And I still use it on a very regular basis now that I'm in residency. It's very durable. I've had no breaks at all in it. It's a little bit worn on the front of it, as you can see, because I've used it for very many years at this point, but it's still in excellent condition otherwise, and I'm gonna keep using it until it literally falls apart. Now, this is a very old backpack, so I don't know if they sell it anymore in stores. If I'm able to, I'll try to include the link to not only this backpack, but everything in it down below in the description box. If you're looking for something similar to it, I just went to the Sporting Goods Store Academy and I asked one of the people who works there if they had any suggestions for unique, but also very durable backpacks. And that's how I came across this one. So if you can't find this exact one, I'd suggest you go through that same process to help you find one that works for you. Now, without further ado, let's get into what's inside my backpack. So first is the dreaded pager. Nobody really ever likes when this thing goes off, but it's essential. It's something you really need on a day that you're gonna be working very many hours. Usually on a late stay day, like I'm working tonight as a night shift resident, I'm going to be the only intern that's covering a couple of different levels of neonatal ICU. And so I need to be readily available to anyone and everyone in the hospital at all times. And this pager is how I do it. So this is definitely gonna be in the bag. Next up is my ID badge. Now this is another thing that's going to be very important when I'm in the hospital because you need ID access to enter a lot of different areas. And if I were to leave my ID badge at work one day, I would have to rely on somebody else to get through the hospital at all times, which is just very unrealistic and it's burdensome for other people. So I always make sure I have my ID badge on me when I'm heading out. Next up is my stethoscope. Now, many people are probably wondering what kind of stethoscope this is. It is a Littman Cardiology 4. This stethoscope was actually a gift to me from one of my former students that I tutored when I was in medical school. This young lady is an aspiring physician and she comes from a family of people within the medical field. And as a sign of gratitude and appreciation to me for the tutoring that I did with her, not only for different subjects, but also for standardized exams, including the MCAT, this was one of the gifts that she and her family got me. And they were so kind to do this. And it actually worked out perfectly because my stethoscope from medical school had broken a few days before she got me this. And I hadn't even told anyone that it had broken. And then she she got me this gift. So you know who you are out there. Thank you so much for getting me this stethoscope. I still use it every single day and I'm still so appreciative to you and your family for being so kind to me. Something else that you'll notice about this stethoscope is that within this little space, I have 
this. And this is a tool to use for any kind of resident physician who will be working around children. It's actually a light that you can use to shine in kids' eyes whenever you're doing eye exams. Children really do not like when you shine lights in their eyes, which kind of makes sense. I don't know anybody who would enjoy something like that, but kids really don't enjoy that. And also for kids who are in the hospital setting more often than not, who are used to being picked and prodded and have IVs in them and things like that, they have a negative association with people in white coats or with people in scrubs who kind of reach for them to do anything. Even if all you're doing is a simple physical exam and you're just going to listen to their heart and lungs, sometimes they can have such a negative association with the hospital setting and people headed towards them that it makes them uncomfortable and they, they get really upset. So having something fun that almost looks like a toy that you can let the kids play with for a little bit while they get more comfortable with you around it distracts them so usually while i'm listening to kids hearts and lungs they'll just play with this and they'll be distracted from what i'm trying to do and then whenever i need to look into their eyes i'll shine the light in their eyes and it's a lot quicker and it goes by smoother and it's just more comfortable for everyone next up is a notepad Having a notepad on hand is very handy whenever you're working as the intern that's admitting new patients. This allows you to quickly jot down the important details about a patient's case, including their symptoms, maybe some risk factors that are associated with different conditions you're thinking of, and then also it allows you to jot down a differential diagnosis. Having something simple and quick that you can shove into your white coat allows you to do that very quickly and efficiently. So I always have this on my late stay days because usually when I'm working a late stay shift, I will be the only intern resident around to take new admissions. While it's important to have a notepad around that you can use for writing quick information, it's also nice to have around a notebook. A notebook like this is great for taking notes on the rotation that you're on as a whole. I use notebooks and I get these from Walmart. They're dirt cheap at Walmart. I think I got this one for maybe 50 cents and I got it in many different colors and I use one each month for every different rotation that I'm on. So now that I'm on the NICU service, I jot down different concepts that are important to neonatal ICU care. Things like the top five diagnoses that will come to your service if you're on a lower level of ICU care versus the top five things that you may experience with patients in a higher level of ICU care. I write down common signs and symptoms that you should look for whenever a patient is going from bad to worse in their clinical state or things that you should look for that are indications that patients could be getting better and could be closer to being discharged. I like to bring things like this with me on late stay days because you're there for so many hours that there is at least a little bit of downtime sometimes that you can use to really think critically about the service that you're on and try to organize those thoughts into a book that you can look back on later before before you go on to that rotation again in the future. So now that I've mentioned to you my notepads and my notebooks, it's probably important for me to mention to you what I use to write in those things. And it's these ballpoint pens. Now I have my own system. I encourage you to use whatever system works for you. But for me, I always have to have three pens on hand, a black, a red, and a green. And whenever I get a patient list or whenever I'm writing in my notepad or in my notebook, I color code. Whenever I'm a late stay resident and I have different tasks for different patients, I use the red pen to create check boxes and then I use the black pen to write down what is on the to-do list next to that checkbox. And then I refer to that checklist throughout the day and as I get things done, I use the green pen to check things off of that checklist. That way, by the end of the day, I know that everything on my list is accomplished and nothing on my list is missed because I use the same three pens and I organize my to-do list in the exact same way every single time I do it every single day. That is just my organization pattern. I know some people like the multicolored pens that are just one pen and you just click each different pen side, which is great. But for me, I just like to use three separate pens. These were cheap. I also got them from Walmart. And if I ever run low on ink in one of them, I can just buy a ton more from Walmart. Next up in my backpack is my laptop. As you can see, it's in a case here. I always keep it in a case. 
and I don't have to use my laptop every day because at the hospital I work at, we are given work rooms with multiple computer workstations. So I have no need to bring my laptop, but on a day where I'm working as a late state resident, if there is downtime, it's nice to have my laptop on me for studying purposes. I do have my boards coming up, specifically step three. And so having my laptop on hand means that if there is downtime, I can pull out my laptop and review some notes that I've been studying over the past few days, or maybe do a set of you roll questions. Up next in my backpack is my lunchbox. As you can see, this lunchbox is nothing special. I got it from Target and it's very small. It honestly can't even hold more than just a meal and water. It can only hold one or the other, but that's fine. I don't want something that's really big. And this isn't something I necessarily have to bring on a late stay day at work either because whenever you're working a certain number of hours over the normal number for a short stay day, at the hospital I'm currently working at, they give you meal cards. So I technically have my meals covered for those days, but I try to save those up for days where I feel like I really, really need it. And if I use them every time I was a late stay resident, even though there are healthier options at work, I feel like I'm able to better hold myself accountable if I bring a meal with me to work so I don't have to rely on whether or not I actually feel like reaching for the salad versus something that's less healthy but looks really good and appealing to me that's on the lunch line that day. Next up is a thermos. Now I don't always bring a thermos. Sometimes this thermos is replaced by a large canteen style bottle that I use for water. But if I think I'm gonna be really tired that day, I may bring this thermos and I'll fill it up with coffee and that way I can have some coffee on hand throughout the day to help perk me up for a long shift. And last but not least are chargers. I have my laptop charger and I have my cell phone charger. That way, no matter how busy we get and no matter how often I'm using my cell phone or my laptop, I'll always be able to quickly charge them back up so they'll be usable all day and all night. And that's pretty much it guys. That is everything that I carry in my backpack as an intern resident physician when I'm going to be at work for a long day. If you're a current resident physician, what do you put in your backpack? If you're a medical student, how does your backpack differ from my backpack as a resident? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or you just wanna chat, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. And if you like videos about medicine, lifestyle, and fitness, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.